Okay, my name is Bernd Pesau and I started GeForce together with Anton Ertel about 30 years ago, pretty much exactly 30 years ago, I think. And uh, when we de released the first versions, we started with GeForce 0 point something. It doesn't mean it's not ready, it's just we count starting with 0. And the uh, intervals between releases like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5 followed a Fibonacci uh, row. So after uh, we, we found out that this is going to increase more and more and it's not a good way to deal and we will change the release schedule with GeForce 1.0. So last time we had a release due, we, uh, this would be 0 0.8. We decided to skip this release and instead bring forward GeForce 1.0, which then took a lot longer than expected, as usual. And now here are what, what's inside GeForce 1.0. We are pretty yeah. close now. And yeah. Uh, the first thing is we have new headers. So we have a big header unification, three tokens equal each other, the name token, the XT, and the body of the definition is the same address. This makes it easier to program and to teach about programming for us. So the header field starts with a name. The name comes first. And these are cell offset, and this C is the length in bytes. So this is a byte offset. And then there's the flex and count field. And we decided to have up to eight bits for flex, and the rest is of this cell is the count. So this is a 32 bit system. You can have up to 16 megabyte names. That should be enough for everybody. Uh, you can only have up to 256 names that long in a 32 bit system. So it's okay. Then there's a link field, a code field that was moved from the offset yeah. zero to minus two to get this body at, at zero. And then we have the name has, ha, header method table at yeah. minus one. So this equals the layout of mini of two. So you can use yeah. mini of two to address all these header method functions. And then the body starts at, at this address zero. Okay, next is how do our header does our header method table look like? So it starts with a link to the previous table that is uh, used because it's a prototype based system. Uh, you can you usually copy from an, a word you already have, and you may modify the method table. And if it's not modified, we use this link to search through all the tables and compress them equal tables. So it's one, not one table per word, but one table per word class. Then we have compile comma. We have two, that is the method for is and two. Is and two are synonyms. We have the fur fetch, and we have an extra field that is usually used for does. Uh, you could use it for other extras, but so far we don't have any other extras. Uh, and then we have uh, functions for the name itself, like name to int, name to comp, name to string and name to link. And that allows us to have different ways to deal with interpretation and compilation semantics. 
especially when you have special compilation semantics name to com gets replaced. And we have ways to deal with, for example, headerless words where name to string just returns an empty string and we don't need to store that empty string. And name to link is the same for headerless, uh, it's zero even when we don't store the link uh, at all. So this is to compress headerless uh, names like colon no name. The next thing we did was recognizers. That is a big change from the, the way FOS uh, auto interpreter is done before. We use this minimalistic core API with the sequences and the unification approach. Unification means that the search order also is a recognizer sequence. Uh, so this follows the last proposal of, of the minimal core API recognizer in the standard in uh, on for standard.org. So the core where to hook in new ways to deal with false words is the deferred word false recognize. And the outer interpreter looks like begin, pass name, dub, while, false recognize, execute, repeat. So false recognize returns a translator and the translator is executable and when execute will translate into whatever this current state of the system is in. There are also ways to access translators directly to have interpretation, compilation of post semantics specific, but the auto interpreter, of course, does it uh, state dependent. Uh, to, to, when you have more than one recognizer, you use this false, this recognize sequence to define a sequence of recognizers, which itself behaves as a recognizer. So the system itself has a recognizer sequence and starting with recognized name token and recognized numbers, recognized floats and whatsoever. Uh, and that is stuck into false recognize. Word lists are recognizers and to be that they are executable. So a word list ID, you just execute it, giving it a string and you get either the name token and reg type NT or zero or the not found as result. And search order is a reg sequence. So this is a recognizer sequence. So this is really unified and uh, a number of code, mostly duplicated code goes away. And that was found to be the most elegant approach so far with the recognizers and works very well. We have some extensions to the translator, so you cannot only have interpretation, compilation, and postbound semantics. If you want to, you can add your more semantics, another state. For example, we have a config.fs which passes config files and it uses this extension to have a config state, config uh, semantics. It's a configurations usually store things in variables, so that is what the conf config semantics does. Uh, we have an IDE. Uh, last time I did this present presentation, Anton did that part and showed it uh, on the screen. I will do that too, but let me first explain what the IDE does. It's not an editor. So the editor still is outside, it's still Emacs is the preferred editor. But within the FOSS system, you can do things like locate and browse the source code. You can do help, browse the manual. You can do where and show where words are used and uh, navigate from one word to the others. And you can use backtrace to investigate a crash. 
and also browse within the source code. And that is usual, useful even if you are outside the editor. Maybe later GeForce versions will have a minimalistic editor there too. I think for Android, it's a good idea to add an editor function because on Android, you don't have side-by-side -side windows with an editor uh, installed. So a, a system that comes on a tablet also should provide an editor itself. We can go into, make this bigger. So the last one was the backtrace test, yeah. So, GeForce, uh, you can say locate dupe, for example. So you get to see dupe, where is dupe, and how is it defined? It's in a primitive. You can scroll around, up and down, and now we can say where is to abused, and this is a very long list. So it's used 1017 cases. I say next where to get to the first use in the kernel. So we have the apps is to zero lesson. We can use cursor left and cursor right to get to the other usage uses of do. And even go roll around. So this was the first one, and this is the last one in the disassembler. And you can get out by typing escape or Q or some other a uh, key that is not recognized will then be copied, but escape and Q will not be copied. So uh, we try to use the debugger, that is, we do the backtrace test. And so now something went wrong. And let's see with next trace what went wrong. So the this here in the kernel through minus 13. What did we do? Ah, test one called not found. And not found will, of course, throw minus 13. How did test one get called? It got called from test two. And test two got called from test three. So you can, if that is in several different files, you can see uh, your why was the mistake? What did happen? And how did it end up somewhere deep in the system code to throw something? Because usually you have maybe more than just three levels and maybe more than one file. So it's not so easy. And this one makes debugging backtraces very comfortable. Okay, next thing is Vic. So to, we can now generate C bindings automatically or mostly automatically because you need to do a bit of stuff in the .i file uh, to, to manipulate the output. The flow we have now is you have a .i file that helps Swig to find and understand C files. And I think it's a good show one. is uh, gps.h and uh, what you usually, what you need to do is have this module and insert include, and includes the actual .h file. What is very useful uh, when you have varying uh, versions is to define something like that gps minver. That means uh, if this, GPS API version is at least 
x point y, then it's true, otherwise it's false. You need some type definitions, uh, at least of the types which are not integers. And you need to percent include the gps.h. That is telling Zwick to look at this. And then you can do this exec and prep stuff to, to uh, uh, change the output. Especially here, I have a if GPS minver 9.1, then you can have the features before. If you have an older GPS uh, demon, you cannot have these functions here. Okay, the .i file generates a percent fsi.c file. That is an intermediate file to be compiled with the C compiler. And this intermediate file contains everything to output uh, the, the force bindings. You need to compile this. It compiles an FSX file. And you need to invoke this FSX file with the option minus GForce to generate bindings for GForce or with minus uh, VFX for VFX and minus Swift force for Swift force. And this generates actual bindings. So when we look at build Unix GPS.fs, you have the bindings for GeForce. So that is, you get a GPS adlib and you use an address as var arc. And you have a number of constants, and you have long constants, and the float constants. You have enums, and you have structs, structs, and these structs uh, all have the addresses, the offsets calculated in the C code. So if C does something weird, and uh, maybe there are fields inside the structures that are not visible, uh, this gets all right. This is then fine. And in the end, after many, 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 many fields, you have functions. So you have G a C function, GPS open, which takes two strings and an address, and GPS close takes an address, and so on. And then you can use this interface. And so far, this is not merged into the Swig main branch because the uh, Swig maintainers told Gerald he did it all wrong and it's completely done, has to be done different and you don't do it that way and whatever. And we have some ideas about how to do it uh, better and the idea is to have uh, a complete binding library that does what this .fs file inside GeForce does uh, generating bindings by compiling C code with a generic force invocation so Every all these C functions in force are called by passing two stack pointers to them and getting two stack pointers as a result. So data stack and floating point stack. And that is very generic. Every force system can use this approach. And so we can generate libraries that are independent of the force system. And these libraries are C libraries. You just open them and you have a standard defined name for accessing a reflection style idea. So reflection means you can ask this library, what do you implement? So what kind of constants do you have? What kind of enums do you have? What kind of structures do you have? What kind of functions do you have? And this library will return source code for you, for the first system to, to bind to this library. 
And that is a, a huge increase or improvement over what C libraries actually do because C libraries only have code and entry points and no way to tell what is inside them. They use the .h files and the .h files are complicated C and you really need a tool like Swig to interpret them. And it's uh, the outlook means that post 1.0, this will be even easier than now because you will have a .i file and it generates your library and you can just hook to that library and don't need to think about all the other stages. So the last part of what's new and very different from before in GeForce 1.0 is, uh, is Minos 2, the lightweight GUI library. And I made some presentations, longer presentations in the past. So we have uh, a class framework which has different types of actors that is uh types of classes that is the actor actors whenever you click something or hit a key or whatever the action on a widget you have widgets and you have boxes which are composite widgets and widgets itself you have viewports to put in things like in uh, sliders and so or uh, to render things off screen and you have animations. Animations are objects that run through, uh, run for some time and change some values from zero to one. And if they are done with this changing, they disappear again. And as long as they run, they will trigger redraw of the, of the screen. Widgets, that is a pretty much complete list. So you have glues, you have tiles, you have frames, you have icons, you have images, you have text, editable text and part text that is broken into paragraph text and the canvas. And what will come uh, in post 1.0 is video. And boxes, you have horizontal vertical and uh, stacking boxes so stacking boxes are on top of each other set box you can overlay one box with another and you have uses of those boxes like sliders and par box which break text into a paragraph and what might become next is grids uh, what you can already do is uh, Tables, tables go through glues. So you have a glue assigned to every, every uh, table row. And that gets updated to reflect the maximum size of this table element, uh, table row. And all the widgets behind it will inherit the size through a single glue. That way you don't need to have a table element you and you also can use this approach to calculate uh, very complex tables where one where normal table element doesn't isn't sufficient and of course this presentation is rendered in minus two so uh, i just disabled the animation because on sharing the screen animations don't come through very well so you can download GeForce on geforce.org. It's still called 0.7.9 underscore date, but we expect to get a release soon in the next few months as we polish uh, documentation and things like that. And it's mostly done. And then we switch to a, a regular schedule, train station schedule, uh, and just release whatever snapshot we have uh, when the quality is good enough as new 1.x release. And 
think about things to go to GeForce 2.0, which will be a native code for us, so have its own compiler. So time is good. You have, can ask your questions. Uh, okay, uh, Bill Stoddart, um, you're first up. Unmute yourself. Thank you very much, Brent. This will be very nice to have this release. Um, yeah. The 30-bit version, 32-bit yeah. versions, are they still of interest uh, on the PC or, or are they yeah. for Android? On the PC, no. If you have a Raspberry Pi or something like that, then you get the 32-bit version. On an x86 PC, I think, uh, we are now 20 years into 64-bit uh, AMD from AMD. So if you still have a 32-bit PC, uh, it's retro computing. You can use GeForce 0.5 because that's about as old and be happy with it. Well, uh, but it works, of course, it works, but it's not of interest on the PC. <laughs> okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Do we have any other questions? I'm not seeing any other raised hands. Uh -huh. uh, Gerald. Yes, uh, I would also like to ask a question about um, how is do you think you will also include Minos in the default installation, an easy way to launch it? Yes. Okay, that was a good answer. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, looking forward. So what I do now is for installing, you can have Debian packages and Mino, it's separated into a number of dif uh, different sub packages. And if you want to install Minos, you need to install GFAS Minos. And mm -hmm. uh, if you just install the, the GFAS Common also, you don't get Minos, but if you install GFAS Minos, you get it. It's mm -hmm. just to make sure you can have a minimalistic uh, install without too much overhead. Because if you install Minos, you will get uh, a number of fonts to display all kinds of things you will, and you will have a dependency on OpenGL. So if you have a small system, maybe you want only GeForce, just like on the Raspberry Pi or so for, for this kind of small system. And okay, we I have think... Docker containers and Flatpak and Snapcraft and with Android, uh, so there's a number of ways to get it fully pre-compiled and you don't need, need to deal with that yourself. Okay, I think we have we have time for one more quick, quick question, so Klaus. Um, yeah, uh, Bernd, uh, how about running uh, the new GeForce under Windows uh, 10, 11 or whatever the current version is? Uh, my plan is, after this was discussed on the GNU mailing list, that uh, supporting Windows directly is a waste of time because you have the WSL system and you can install a decent Linux on Windows and run even with WSL 2, you can even run Minos 2. And that is a better use for my time because you have then a really working GeForce and not a half broken GeForce like it's now with the Windows version. And I don't need to waste time to port this over to, to, to Microsoft's proprietary system. The GNU approach is if it's not free, a non-free operating system, do not waste your time. 
try if you want the users there try to see if you if there's a way for them and wsl is a way for them otherwise don't waste your time so windows 10 and windows 11 uh, provides a way to use gforce quite nicely Okay, right. so that is hopefully uh, go, getting to go into the documentation how to do that. Yes. Thank you.